Hello, I'm Dave Prouse. Let's install Fedora 32 Workstation. For this video, I'm installing Fedora Workstation into KVM, which is running on a Linux computer here. Now, you don't have to use KVM. You can use whatever virtualization platform you like, but I just thought that I'd show some KVM for this particular install. This is an optional operating system for the webinar. I'm going to be showing how to connect a Fedora workstation to a free IPA domain. So it's optional, but if you want to follow along with me during that webinar, you're going to want to have a Fedora workstation. So let's install it. Now, first of all, we're going to go in here to our virtual machine manager, which I have open already, and I have some uh, virtual machines already here. Now, I use the virtual machine manager portion of KVM a lot to connect to locally stored virtual machines and especially virtual machines that are on servers. I also use Versh in the command line, but uh, the Virtual Machine Manager is the GUI version, which makes things really fast to work with. And it makes it easy to create virtual machines. So let's do that now. We'll go to File, New Virtual Machine, and we're going to be installing the ISO image. We're going to be installing from the ISO image and you first have to grab that. I've already downloaded it, but you can get that from getfedora.org slash en slash workstation slash download. Just make sure that you're downloading the correct version that you need. For most of you, it'll be x86-64, but uh, that's going to depend on what you have. And you can also try it on Windows or Mac OS with the Fedora Media Writer. Okay, but generally, if you're installing to the virtual machines, the ISO image is what you want, and most of you will go for x86-64 version. So right now, currently, the latest version is Fedora 32, and that's what I'm installing. So we're selecting local install media, ISO image, and we'll go forward, and then we have to browse to wherever that image is. In the virtual machine manager in KVM, you create storage volumes where you can store your ISO images and storage volumes where your virtual machines will go. So if you look here in the storage volume, it's just my ISO folder. I have Fedora Workstation and that's what we're going to use. Here it is. It's uh, version 32-1.6. We'll choose that and that'll enter that there. And you can type an operating system that you want to install. It'll see Fedora 29 right now. That's fine. I'm going to change the settings anyways, and we'll go forward. Now, because this is a client operating system, and because it has a GUI, I'm going to want to use a lot of memory and CPUs. So give it as much as you can within your system. I'm going to do 8,192 megabytes or eight gigabytes of RAM. And you can see I have 32 gig on this particular Linux system. And I'm going to use four CPUs. And we have up to 12 available on here. It's actually threads. This is a hex core system, six cores, 12 threads. I'm going to use four of those. And we'll go forward, but do whatever you can. Now, I'm going to select or create custom storage here, so I'm going to click the radio button for that. If not, it just creates a disk image for you in the default location. I don't want that because my default location is an SSD drive. I want to make use of my NVMe drive. So I'm going to select and manage and go to the NVMe storage location that I've already created. And I'm going to create a new volume. We'll call this uh, Fed client install. I'll leave it as 20 gig. That's fine. I have the space. We'll click finish. Creates that volume. And we want to choose that for our uh, installation path. And the default uh, extension for this is QCOW2. You could also do raw files. Uh, but for a lot of what I do, I use QCOW2. We'll choose that. That enters that in from my uh, Linux, uh, excuse me, from my NVMe drive. And we'll go forward. We'll name the installation. I'm just going to call it uh, Fed Client Install. It's not really Fedora 29. This is 32. KVM just thinks it is. We'll customize the configuration before the installation. And 
I'm going to go to the network selection. And if you look here, the default is virtual network NAT. And that's what I'm going to use here. And that's what I'm going to be using in the webinars is network address translation. But there's a lot of other options here. And I've all also created a bridge on this system where I do a lot of my work. Uh, I really need to do it in a bridged environment so I can connect to other systems. If you want to do bridging in KVM, you have to create the bridge first of all and then specify the shared device name here whatever that bridge name is but I'm using the default for this and will be for the webinar using NAT and then we'll click finish and that'll bring us to the customization screen here and I like to look things over and make sure that everything is good so again this is just a quick overview of KVM uh, and the virtual machine manager again you don't have to use this but I really like it. It's super cool and it's super fast and awesome. So it may be something you want to consider if you're running on any Linux computers. And so we have our OS information. Again, we can change that. It's called 32 here. But we'll just leave it. Doesn't make a difference. CPUs, memory, the boot options. Okay. And we're using vert IO drivers for the hard drive and I want to use that for the network card as well. Okay, here's the source path for our virtual machine, QCOW2, looks good. Now sometimes your virtual machines in KVM might slow down and you can make some changes here in your advanced and performance options for the virtual disk, like turning off caching, changing the IO mode to native and so on. So there's some options here. You can change this to raw as well before you start using it. But we're going to leave the defaults. Uh, the SATA CD-ROM, well, the ISO image is here, and that's good. Display is Spice. That's what I want. Video is QXL. And most importantly, network interface, the virtual network interface. I want to use Vert IO. Now, for some systems that you install, you might need this or just select the hypervisor default. But for most Linux systems that I'm working with as VMs, I use vert IO for speed. And that gives it a new MAC address automatically. And we're all good. Don't need to really make any changes here. Just wanted to overview, make sure it's all good. And we'll begin the installation. There we go. That brings up the screen to start Fedora Workstation Live 32. And it's a lot like the server installation. There's some differences that we'll see along the way, but uh, we're going to press enter to start that install. And I'm going to go to full screen here. Give that a moment to start up. I'm going to escape out of the check for the drive because this is a brand new virtual drive that we just created. So no big deal. We can escape out of that. If they were drives, uh, physical drives that you had used previously, you should let the check run. And that can be really time consuming with servers. So you have to make uh, account for that time. That's going to start all of these services and get us into the GNOME Display Manager and start the install. Okay, so you can try it temporarily or you can install to the hard drive and that's what we're gonna do. Okay, welcome to Fedora 32. I'm going to select my language, leaving it as defaults, English. And now we need to configure our system. A lot less configuration than what we did in the server install, but we do have to go in here, installation destination. I'm not changing this. We just have to accept it. We're going to leave it as automatic and let Fedora install all the folders and partitioning and everything within our virtual drive. So we're going to leave that as is and just click done. And that'll save that, check it, and we are good. I'm going to change the time and date also. It always shows Los Angeles. Change that to New York. That's my time zone. And then, boom, we can begin the installation. That's it. It's that simple. When we're done, I'm going to configure a little bit so that we can utilize this and then SSH, uh, make sure that I can SSH into it. So I'm going to pause the recording here 
and come back when the installation of the software is finished. Okay, the installation is complete. So we spent more time looking at KVM than we did actually installing Fedora. So it's that easy to install it. And generally, the operating system is designed to just work uh, on really any hardware and in any virtualization system. So we finished that and we can go and reboot and restart the workstation now. And I want to take a look here and make sure that everything is configured properly. And I'm going to change uh, host name and verify IP address and so on. Let's go back to full screen here. There we go. All right. So one of the things that I'm going to be doing, well, first of all, let's... Uh, Go through the intro here. It says welcome. Click next. I'm turning off the privacy options for location services and so on. And I'm skipping connecting online. Okay. So we need a few details to complete this setup. Who are we? Well, for this uh, webinar and for most of my uh, labs, I just use the account user. And so we do the user account. Click next for that. We'll have to set a password for that and confirm it. Click next. Be careful not to lose your password. So the user account set up. And we'll start using Fedora now. And the users can be found, and you get some nice videos here that you can check out for how to use uh, some of GNOME. But the users can be found by pressing the super key or the Windows key and typing in user and you'll see here users add and remove and this is where we're going to be going to add users onto the free IPA domain later right right now all we have is the user account so there's a couple things I like to do here when I'm working on Fedora client or a Debian client or really any Linux client with a GUI and working out as a desktop. And so one of the first things is to uh, go to power and remove the blank screen because this is a virtual machine. I'm going to set that to never and make sure that automatic suspend is off. We don't want that for the virtual machine. That's not really necessary. When they're idle, they don't use much in the way of resources on the hosting computer. Then we'll go to keyboard shortcuts. This is a little bit different. If you've used uh, earlier versions of Fedora Workstation, this might have had it. This had a little bit of a different uh, navigational path. But keyboard shortcuts, I'll always add. Well, I'll do a lot of shortcuts here that aren't listed, but I'll always add a couple. And the main one is terminal. And I like to open the terminal with a keyboard shortcut. Um, in the past, it was always Control Alt T. And I like to use Control alt t So first we have to know the command that will open the terminal. And that is gnome-terminal, if you're using gnome as your desktop. And then we can set the shortcut, and I'm going to press Control alt t Now that might get in the way of some applications, like uh, I use PyCharm and No Machine, and they have Control alt t shortcuts. So you want to pick something that won't get in the way of your applications. But anyways, I'll add that now and close that. And if I press Control alt t that brings up our terminal. And let's adjust the uh, preferences so we can see it better here. And we'll leave this as uh, Tango Dark and increase the size of the font a little bit, maybe 13. That should do. There we go. So we're in as user at localhost-live. That's not the name we want, but that's okay. Let's see if we can get on the internet. We'll do a ping. Close out of this. And we'll do a ping. And we'll try example.com. 
and it's good. We can see the internet. So the client automatically got an IP address and networking information from the DHCP server. In this case, it got it from the KVM DHCP server, but that's generally what'll happen. It'll grab it from your virtualization platforms DHCP server if you're running NAT. If you're in bridged mode, you would get it from a DHCP server on the LAN. Let's take a look at that IP configuration with an NMCLI. And we are indeed 192.168.122. That's the network for KVM by default. And I've been given .229, which is fine. I can use that. That's cool. In the webinar, we're going to be setting up a DHCP server that will hand out the IP information automatically to the client. And so this will all change, but we won't have to do much on the client we'll want to release that IP address with a DH client dash R and then get a new address from the DHCP server that we create with the DH client command. But for now it's fine. And if we do an IP route show, it'll show the default gateway address 192.168.122.1 and our DNS server, 192.168.122.1. So that's all good. Now, later we will be making changes to our client and we're gonna wanna do that as root. We're not gonna be able to do that as user. So first we're gonna have to actually enable the root account. So we're gonna have to do a sudo dash I and it says, hey, hey, Make sure you're uh, doing the right thing when you're acting as an administrator. But first, we're going to get in as user with the user password, and that'll bring us into root. Now, at this point, root does not have a password, so we want to change that with passwd and type in the new password for root. Done. Okay, at this point, we can change the host name because I don't want localhost-live. I want to use uh, fed-client. So we'll, oh, another thing we want to do is we want to run an update at some point. So DNF update when you get a chance, but I want to get Vim installed. So I'm going to grab Vim because I'm always using that. And we'll that, let that grab that from the internet. Okay, and here is Vim Enhanced and the dependencies that it requires. So we'll say yes for this. Install Vim. And we can edit our files with Vim now. But again, you definitely want to do a DNF update and check if there's updates out there available for your installation. And you can see that even though we just installed this, yes, there are 13 packages that would be installed and 538 upgraded. And that's a gig of space. So I'm not gonna do that right now. That would take a long time, but I would like you to do that update before you get to the webinar. Uh, and it's a good idea to do that in general before you start doing anything with the operating system. But the only other thing I want to do now is uh, modify the host name. And you can do this in a variety of ways. We'll just do it with slash etc slash hostname. And we don't want localhost at local domain. What I want is fedclient.example.com. Save it. And that will uh, save the changes. We don't need to reboot and go through that. But that's it. And at this point, we have the root account enabled and we'll be able to uh, install the free IPA software on here as root and then uh, set it up and then connect to the free, P free IPA domain and then also create the new user accounts uh, or I should say create them on this client and use them to connect to the domain. So that'll be some of the work we do in the webinar. So it's good to have a Fedora workstation available to be able to do those things. So that's about it for this video. I'm out of here. We'll see you at the next video.